Hi, I'm Olivia. This is my channel, Olivia B. And this video is the next in a series of videos that I've been posting um, for the Blackbird Designs Quilt Along that my friend Lori from Textilus and I are hosting. Um, you can join in on the uh, Quilt Along by using the hashtag BBDQAL and uh, post your videos to YouTube or your pictures to Instagram and we'd love to see what you're working on. Um, this video is a little later than I initially planned, I apologize for that. Um, my dear dog Dusty was ill and um, my world kind of stopped for a while to um, help him get through that and so this video is delayed but he is doing much better. Um, I'm not going to go into all of it here um, but maybe I'll fill my stitchy friends in on my next floss, floss tube. Um, but anyway I'm, I'm sorry this video is a little late. Hopefully if you were um, itching to get stitching you um, watched it you know watch some videos and, and learn the basics and we're able to start. Uh, hopefully I didn't delay you. But um, this video is going to be about how I hand applique my pieces onto the background. In the last video I showed you how I prepare them. Um, this is not so much a tutorial but more of um, a video that shows how I work through it. I am still fairly new to applique. I'm almost done with my first quilt top so I've got some practice in there but I am still definitely learning. Um, and there are a lot of great YouTube videos out there on how to do hand applique. Um, a lot of them have better angles. Um, so I would encourage you to look around if you're new um, and find, find some tips out there. Um, but I'll show you how I do it and I'll mention anything that helpful that I've learned along the way. Um, if you are an experienced applique, hand applique and you have some tips or uh, suggestions, please share them in the comments. I'd love to read them and I'm sure other people would as well. Um, if you have any questions about anything that I've shown in this video, let me know. Um, you can also email me. I'll put my email address on the screen. Um, my friend Catherine Adrian, uh, she started Hand Applique recently. Um, she has a floss tube channel. Um, so she just, her first block is the same one that I'm going to show you in this video that I'm working on. It's from Fresh Picked and it's called Bluebird. And I mentioned Catherine because she said that she found it to be finicky, and I think that is the perfect word for hand applique, at least the way that I do it. It can be finicky. So you are gonna see me uh, fussing around in this video with my hand applique, but that's just how it works for me. So, um, you know, I hope you'll learn a little something or at least uh, have fun <laughs> watching me fumble through it, but um, I, let's just get into it. All right, so here are all the pieces that I created in um, the last video using AppliQuick. Um, they've all got their edges turned around, and I've got my bias tape. Um, so here's my picture of the block the way it's supposed to turn out. This is a nine and a half inch block that gets sewn together with other blocks, and in the end it's nine inches. Um, because I'm going to be working in hand with this, I like to give myself a little extra when I'm a little extra space when I'm cutting the background fabric, um, just in case it frays, then I can trim it down nice and neat. Uh, might not be completely necessary, um, but it's just a little extra fabric, it doesn't hurt. So um, they have you cut the block to nine and a half inches square. In this case, I've cut it, my background piece to 10 inches square, just to give myself a little extra room. Um, that gives myself an extra quarter inch on each side that I can trim down. Um, one thing you can do if it helps um, to, you know, when you're laying things out is you can mark the edges um, to show you what the seam needs to play, take place within. So in this case, it's all gonna take place <laughs> it's all going to be um, sewn or shown within a 9 inch square. So since I have a 10 inch piece of fabric here, what I can do is mark a half inch along the edges. And this side, this line that I'm marking um, will in essence be the line that I'm going to be sewn, will be sewn on um, if I measure things correctly. So, um, you know, I can mark it and know that that line will get sewn over. But since I'm not perfect, um, I don't want to use something very dark or something that won't come off um, just in case it peeks out somewhere. So in this case, I've just got this um, sew line chalk pencil that I use for marking sometimes. Um, it's, I'll just do like a, a light line. Um, of course, you want to test anything beforehand. I've used this before and I know I can wipe it off. All right, 
light, so I'm not sure how well that'll show up, but I do, here in person, I can see a nice light line around my scene. Um, and so I know that everything needs to fit within that line. Okay, so um, here's the layout. They give you a nice grid for their blocks. Um, in this case, every square here represents one inch. These are actually, if I were to measure this page right here, these are half an inch blocks. So um, one way I can make it very accurate is if I blew up this picture 200%. Um, I would then have my exact grid and I can lay out my pieces and they should all fit. Um, I wanted to, I haven't done that before. Um, I would be tempted in this instance to do that, but I didn't, um, I didn't want to start this video and have it be like, okay, stop. Now you need to go make, find a photocopy machine. Um, so we're just gonna just do it the way I have done it. Um, and the way Blackbird does things is a little more, they call it whimsical. <laughs> so they just kind of go with it. Not everything has to be super perfect. Um, but uh, one thing you can do to give yourself um, a better idea is of where the lines are is to fold it in half like this. Fold it in half again. And now we know where our, you know, this is like four and a half inches in from the the line that we drew so that's about right here middle of the bird so that gives us a kind of a, a good good reference point um, the other thing I'm going to do is use my um, my grid um, cutting mat here and this will help me see where the inches are um, and that's kind of a, a good way to tell too okay so um, but this is the way that I like to do it, that I've been doing it. Um, it, it does take time. <laughs> so, um, you know, again, this isn't a quick process. There may be, they're very likely a quicker process of laying out your applique pieces, um, where they need to go. Um, I, uh, I would love to hear how you do it. Um, any tips that you have, might have, if you're experienced with this, um, this is not really a tutorial. I'm just going to show you how... I do it um, and the way that I like to do it is to use my applique pins and pin down the pieces um, before I sew anything down so the way I do this is I, I figure everything out according to this layout um, I pin everything in place and then I will use my basting glue um, and I will pin down like some of the bottom pieces, the pieces that are underlined. So you can see there's going to be overlap in some of these. Um, for example, the vines, these some go under other pieces. So of course those will be the ones that we want to sew down first. So we wouldn't sew down a full leaf um, before we, we sew down a stem. So I'll go through, I'll pin everything down so I know that everything has a place. And then I will unpin a bunch of pieces and take them off. And I will um, go through with my glue and start gluing a few of these vines down. Um, and then I will hand applique those to the background. And then I will go in and bring some of the top pieces and glue those down and sew those down. So that's the overall process. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to film the... Uh, process of putting everything in its place and pinning it down and then going from there um, and you know it's gonna take some time so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna film that in real time I imagine I'll probably speed some of it up when I'm playing it back um, but I'm not going to show you the entire sewing down process um, because sewing a block like this for me personally is going to take quite a few hours. I don't know if I had to estimate I'd say five, six hours. Um, so I'm not going to record all of that, but I will record the beginning of doing the vines. And then I'm going to um, come back with the vines sewn and then I will show you how I sew a few of the other pieces down. So that's kind of an overview of the plan here. Um, so I'm going to start with working on getting the pieces down my block. Um, I only have so much space here under the camera, so I will try my best to get it all in. Um, I think what I'll do is maybe put my grid right here and then keep it so I can have my, uh, my inches here, my reference. All right, so. One thing that I did not talk about in my last video in preparing the pieces is that when you have overlap, for example, this wing here, um, 
I turned the edges around the entire bird. There was a mistake in doing that. What I should have done was not turn the edges that go under the wing right there um, because that's going to create some bulk. So what I did after that was I went back and I made little cuts here and I pulled this back from the paper so that it's no longer folded over the edge. So you can see it looks a little scraggly. It's not going to show up. Um, the uh, That wasn't hard to do. Um, but I should have done that the first time around. Um, so you see with these uh, leaves here, I ended up doing the full leaf rather than making them out of two pieces. But you can see here this line. So you, when you made your shapes, you would have um, included the seam allowance here and not folded it under and then put this piece on top. Um, so you'd be covering up a raw edge here rather than making these two um, and putting them next to each other, which you could do, but um, this is a much simpler way to do it. And then with the wing here again, you know, you can mark here, this is where you would not turn the fabric under or else you're gonna have like a hard ridge showing up, um, which I have done. And that's how I, I learned that lesson. <laughs> um, so just wanted to point that out. So I think, um, I'm going to start here with figuring out where the bird goes um, because that's kind of the key component. Okay, so I'm going to line up my, my cutting mat grid with the actual drawn line um, so that I know if this bird starts um, almost three inches up, he's going to start about three inches up from that drawn line. So about there. His tail is ends just slightly under an inch from the border. And his head is about an inch and a half. So I think that is a good point right there. And I'm going to use my applique pins. I imagine you could use other pins as well. Um, I just, the applique pins are nice and short. I will use his wing. Now I've got it marked here so I know where this is going to join. I don't need to get it exact right now because I'm going to be taking these off. But that's about where his wing lies, I'd say right there. Okay, I've got my bird. Um, now we're going to start with the trickier pieces, at least in my view, which are the bias, the bias stems. Um, I'm going to link a video below from the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, I forget the lady's name off the top of my head. I'll put the, her name on the screen right now. Um, but she is a quilt designer, and she has there's a video um, where she you um, shows how she uses. Uh, bias stems and how she works with them and I've watched it multiple times and I learned something I seem to pick up something new every time um, It's very helpful. So she makes more intricate designs with her bias stems and she shows how you can use steam iron um, To shape them which I have done on uh, Larger when I have larger vines That I need to work with um, larger pieces that I need to shape especially if you're making it more like a tighter turn here We're just gonna do little arcs um, So I'm not gonna mess with the iron here um, but she shows how to do that. Um, she shows how to make it um, with the clover bias tape makers that I showed you last in the last video. Um, so she's got a lot of great tips in there. So I, I check that video out. It's not long. Okay. So I am going to work on this one. And um, you'll see I, I've got an open raw edge here. Um, so what I'm going to do when I, I'm going to deal with turning that under when I actually do the sewing. So I'm going to give myself a little extra here. It ends, um, let's see, ends about an inch, uh, about an inch and a half up, about three quarter inches in. So that's about here. This is where I'd want it to end, but I'm going to leave some extra. So that I can deal with it when I'm hand sewing. Okay, and I need to arc up to, let's see, there's 
just doing some double checking here. Arc up to the bird. Arc to about, let's see. About, let's see here. About here. Okay, this is a little low. So this is a slow process, as you can see. Slow and finicky. All right, so I've got my first vine here, and according to my grid, this about here is where the leaf is going to come in. So I am going to trim my bias um, stem somewhere underneath where that's going to go. So I've cut that there, you can see here, I just cut that off, and I'm going to pin my leaf. So, it was a bit of a pain to do the stem and try to get it right, but it does help um, give me a foundation for the other stems. So I'm going to keep at it.
Okay, so now I've got all of that in place. I just have my berries. This stem I left a little long because I'm going to have to turn in the edge. Um, you'll see that one doesn't isn't covered by a leaf. So I have a berry here. A blueberry here. Oh my gosh, my dog is making dramatic size in the background, but he's fine. He's just stretching. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to keep, let's see, yeah, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to pin the berries down because um, I just wanted to make sure I had enough space for them. I will have to kind of check this later to make sure I, I end that stem right. Um, okay, so now I've got everything pinned in place, and this is good because now I can see I did a pretty good job of sticking to the grid. Um, mostly what I want to see is that everything is in its place and that the stems are placed correctly because that's what I'll be sewing down first. So um, now that I've got everything where it should be, I'm going to take off the bigger pieces that I'll get sewn on later. This is where you might be like, okay, you're crazy because you just took all that time to put those pieces there. And I get what you're thinking. Um, but once I get the stems sewn down, it won't be hard to know that this is where the bird goes. I'll be able to tell. And the same with the leaves. I know those go at the end of the stems. And I can go back to the grid again. Um. And yes, this is all wrinkly, but um, when I sew everything down, I'll sew them flat onto the fabric and I can press it if I want to and have it nice and smooth. All right, now I'm going to uh, sew on my bias stems. I'm going to use um, this kind of neutral colored 80 weight orophil cotton thread. I use a number 12 clover, um, I think it's called black and gold, applique needle. And then I just knot the thread at the end. I usually do like a little four time wrap. Um, just enough to keep it from coming through the fabric. I probably do a little extra. And then I also use my little thimble dot. I'm right-handed. I'm going to sew with my right hand. So I just put it on my index finger there, my tip. I like to take my thread from the back. I also see it done where you take the make put the knot underneath what you're stitching. Um, this is how I'm going to do it. Alright, so I come up from the back and I come up through the piece that I'm appliquing on. And I just, it's about a couple threads from the edge, from the turned edge. Um, the way I find it most comfortable to sew is from right to left. So I'm going to go down this line here. I go down immediately, immediately, <laughs> immediate, right above <laughs> the where I came up. So into the background fabric only. Um, so I'm really just a couple threads away from where I came up. Um, and then I go at an angle and I come up to the edge, uh, roughly an eighth of an inch to my left, just catching those two threads right there and coming up. So a lot of my, the hand applique when I'm doing this, a lot of it is done from the top. Dog is here and he's panting. So I'm trying to get down to that edge that is under the overlap. So you can see I'm there now. I'm take one more stitch here to the edge and then I'm going to come back and now I'm at a raw edge where the fabric is not folded um, and it's going to be covered by this stem which I'm going to sew down with an applique stitch. So this doesn't need to be pretty under here, it just needs to be secure. I can do a little running stitch, or I can do a little back stitch, which is what I'm going to do here. To 
just little stitches to cure it. And I'm going to go back down this side. Alright, so I'm near the ed end of this little branch here, and um, if you remember, this is the one that is not overlapped at the end, so I am going to need to turn that under at the end. Um, with my non-biased stems, everything is already turned, but in this case, um, this is just a cut edge, so I am going to turn it under. Before I sew it down, I'm just going to make a little fold. Because I'm working in hand and I'm going slow, I have pretty good control over everything I'm doing here. So I can tuck any kind of threads in as I go along and make sure that I'm not exposing any raw edges. So here is where I'll, I'll stop working just from the top and I'll start doing this kind of stab method to make sure I'm getting the stitches exactly where I need them. And they'll be a little closer together just to make sure I'm fully securing everything. I'm just kind of making sure I tuck any raw threads underneath so that nothing's exposed so it doesn't come and fray later. Okay, so now I have finished this one piece. I'll show you what the back looks like. And you can see my stitches. So what I like to do is just pick up a few threads on the back behind where the stitch piece is, run my needle, and then make a knot. <laughs> there we go. And I'll do that twice just to be safe. And then I'll just run the needle under some of the threads under the piece. Just, there we go. And that's one piece. I'm just going to show you how I um, sew the overlap. Alright, so I'm going about. And then when you have an overlap of pieces, I guess, I mean, the best is to just take, just sew it to the that piece below it. So in other words, I'm just taking a stitch out of the piece below it. Sometimes my needle goes all the way through the background. I don't think it matters. Um, but you don't have to feel like you have to, you know, if you've got several things on top of each other, say you've got four layers, don't feel like you have to go all the way to the background. 
what I do want to make sure I do here is cover the raw edge from the stem that I have underneath. So that's what I'm going to be paying attention to as I sew this piece over it. And again, because I'm, you know, I'm working in my in hand, I'm up close, I'm going slowly, I really have a lot of control over how this stem gets laid down, where it gets sewn in place. And I just keep going about my business. See, it looks like I did go through the background. That's fine. All right, so um, this is going to take me a while, so I'm not going to do all of this um, on video, but I'm actually making this block. Um, let's see, which way is it? Like that? No, like this. No, there we go. Um, I'm making this block in the reverse as well because I'm going to make two project bags. So I have the branches sewn down on the other block, um, and it's just the reverse. So here is the other one that I'm making, and you can see here that the branches are already sewn down in the way that I just showed you. So you, I don't know if you can tell, but these are raw edges right here. And that's okay because my bird is going to go over those. Okay, so the next piece that I am going to lay down is the bird, and I'm going to um, so you show you how I sew that down. Um, but first, in order to put the bird in place, I'm going to use my glue again. Now I find it for myself. I find it's important that I glue my pieces down um, before I sew them rather than just pin them um, because they'll move a little bit. If I do a nice little bit of glue around the edge, it'll stay flat and it'll stay in place. Um, I have tried it the other way and um, kind of learned my lesson and um, because the edges didn't stay exactly where I needed them to, it kind of like bunched up a little bit um, and didn't look quite right. So I just used the glue. It's easy. Um, and I like to just go along the edge, I've found. Just a very light amount of glue. Doesn't take a lot. Well, I'm just going to give it a second here to dry fully before I start running my needle through it. Okay, so I am ready to start sewing on my bird. I'm going to use this light blue thread um, as close a match to the bird. Right here. Make my knot. I think I'll start over here so I can kind of show you how I go around the feet. Again, just coming up from the back. This is a little thicker because I've got um, I've got the paper in this, the um, Appliquick paper, but it's it's not too hard to sew through. I can have a sharp needle and my thimble. So again, just going at the angle like that. Because we did um, so much work prepping the pieces for applique, and now they're all glued down and everything, you can really just go through and stitch it on. Um, I find this is, you know, the most relaxing part. 
do this while I'm watching TV or whatever. And just go along and do my stitches. Now when you're doing pieces on top of pieces, um, when you're using the appliquick method like I did here, you've got extra thickness because you have the appliquick paper, which again is very much like an interfacing. Um, but I find when I'm doing piece upon piece, so sometimes you know you might have three or four pieces laid on, layered on top of each other, it can be um, more challenging. It, it's not as comfortable as when they're just sewing it into a background. So that can be one of uh, the cons to this method um, versus, you know, say needle turn where you're just sewing fabric onto fabric and there's nothing in between the layers. Um, I find it worth it. Um, it is nice when I'm sewing, um, you know, like a, a prepared piece onto just a plain background fabric, um, but it's okay when I'm sewing it onto something thicker. It's knotting up a little. Okay. All right, we're getting into the little feet. I kind of go as far as I can with that angled stitch from the top. And then when I've got it around a corner or a point or anything, I just stab straight down. And I start doing these little slower, smaller stitches. Make sure it stays in place. So those are really just the two stitches. The angled one, like that, and like the stab and poke, I guess you could call. Um, the needle turn, it's, you know, there's more involved because you don't have the edges turned down already. I'm not too picky about having a little bit of space in between my pieces, but you can be. One thing I like about this project is that the block is smaller, so I have less fabric that I need to manage. Um, on the Midnight Silhouette quilt that I'm working on, I just finished appliquing a large center panel, and there's a lot more fabric, so you have to grip it, grip the background a bit differently. Um, it could be awkward at times. This is nice and easy. I can just scrunch everything up and then press out my wrinkles later. Alright, so I'm not going to um, record myself doing the entire bird um, because that's going to take but, me a while. Uh, with the magic of editing, I um, have my finished block. So I have now sewn everything down um, and I wanted to just give you a look at it. You can see the frayed edges here from uh, working with it in hand. Um, that's why I, you know, I cut the background big and then trim it down. Um, I used just a neutral color thread on the leaves and then um, more of a reddish pink thread on the berries and I think uh, it all blends in pretty well. Here's what the back looks like. Um, so you know the main thing is you basically want to plan ahead um, and layer your pieces so that you're sewing down the uh, bottom layer first and then building up from there. Um, as I mentioned it it starts to get thicker as you add more pieces on. Um, I find uh, that the th using a thimble, um, I use these thimble spots, those become especially important when you're um, getting going through the thicker layers. Um, you have to remember you're sewing on these edges um, and those are turned over so you really actually have two layers of fabric and a piece of paper for every piece. Um, so when you're sewing like say the wing on, really you're trying just to get the needle through the the fabric behind it. You can go through all layers. You only really you only need to go through this layer right below it, but that layer also has paper in it. So it does get thicker. Um, the thimble helps. A good sharp needle helps. Um, you saw I glued the bird down. I then sewed around it. Then I 
glued the wing down and sewed around that and then I added all of the leaves and berries at the same time and glued those down um, you could you know do it you could do that sorry <laughs> stumbling over my words you could do everything at once um, I find that um, I like to do it in sections otherwise when I'm gripping the fabric and sewing um, some of it might pop off because I don't use a ton of glue um, so that's why I do it that way but uh, that's what works for me um, there's uh, other ways of basting. You don't have to use the glue. You could just use the pins. Um, for me, that's not quite enough. Um, things shift around, so I like to do the start with the pins and then move to the glue. Um, you could also thread baste, so just make some big stitches with a needle and thread to keep the pieces in place. Um, I would definitely recommend that with bigger pieces. Um, I didn't. I haven't done it that way yet, but I think I will do that next time I have a big piece. Um, this one doesn't have any big pieces. I'm talking about the quilt um, that I'm working on. Anyway, uh, so that's this block. I hope that was helpful. Um, you know, there are a lot of really great videos out there with better camera angles, especially for the actual stitching it on. Um, so I would recommend checking those out if you have any questions. Um, of course, if you have questions for me, feel free to leave in the comments. Um, definitely would love feedback. I'm always looking for feedback on this process since it's still fairly new to me um, and I'm still learning a lot. One good tip I have picked up, um, the, the quilt top that I'm working on has a lot of vines. I didn't pick this tip up until doing most of those vines, but um, if when you're doing these bent vines like this, doing the inside curve first um, definitely helps out. So um yeah leave me any questions comments uh thanks for watching i uh, plan on doing another blackbird designs quilt book flip through i have a few books um that Lori hasn't shown and that i didn't show in my uh, video of books that are in print and so i will plan on doing that and eventually i'll be making this into a project bag um, and i will need to quilt it uh, so i plan on doing that with uh, big stitch hand quilting. I have not quilted any applique yet, so this will be kind of new to me. And I do like doing a little bit of hand quilting, especially on a small project. So if that's something you're interested in, look out for a video on that. Um, I will need to still finish piecing in the front of my project bag uh, before I can do that. But um, that should do it. So thanks a lot for watching if you made it this far. I appreciate it, and I hope this was helpful. Bye.